What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network, continuing our conversation of the Tamper proposal by the great wizard Peter Woolley, uh, proposing here three different BIPs, the BIP Schnorr, the BIP Taproot, the BIP Tab Script. And this continues our already very long uh, playlist here, covering all the interesting topics that we have with Schnorr signatures uh, and Taproot and Graftroot and all the other magic that comes out of this on the World Crypto Network. Uh, so if you like this content, uh, subscribe and support the show. Now jumping back into the Schnorr BIP, we've also talked, we've already talked about the introduction and the design decisions made for the Schnorr BIP. Now today, let's talk about the specifications for both the verification, batch verification, and signing of the Schnorr scheme. We first described the verification algorithm, then the signature algorithm. The following convention is used with constants as defined for SECP 256 k one The lowercase variable represents integers or byte arrays. Okay, so the constant P is the private key, refer or sorry, is the first, is the field size of 0x and then the hash or the hexadecimal F, C to F. The constant N refers to the curve order, which is this right here. Uppercase variable refer to points of the curve with, equa with the equation y to the power of 2 equals x to the power of 3 plus 7. This is the Lipsack P256K1 curve over the integer modulo P. The infinite uh, uh, uppercase P returns whether or not the P is the point at infinity. The X coordinate of P and the Y coordinate of P are integers in the range of 0 to P minus 1 and refer to the X and Y coordinate of the point P, assuming it is not infinity. The constant G refers to the generator uh, for which X, uh, the X coordinate of G is this hex and the Y coordinate of G is this hex. So this is the generator point of the Lipsec P256K1 curve. In addition of points refer to the usual elliptical curve group operations. And multiplications over an integer and a point refers to the repeated application of the group operation. Right? Okay, okay, so this is again uh, all the important stuff for the elliptical curve uh, cryptography, which is we have, well, a literally elliptic curve uh, that has a generator point. And if you uh, multiply this function of the curve over the generator point, uh, then you do group operations. Uh, and uh, that is something for an entire other topic, probably covered on the World Crypto Network, somewhere, somewhere already. Uh, but yeah, this is the mathematics behind it. Again, good to have heard it. I try to accumulate this knowledge and try to understand it. Uh, but, but yeah, this is high level stuff uh, and uh, might not uh, need it, but good to understand it. Functions and operations. Uh, this here refers to uh, a byte array uh, concatenation. The function of x uh, of y or i and y, where x is a byte array, returns j minus one byte arrays in the copy of the eth byte inclusive to the yth byte exclusive of x. The function bytes of x, where x is an integer, returns the 32 byte encoding of x uh, and most significant bytes first. Uh, and again, this uh, is, is very in-depth coding uh, or implementation stuff. The function bytes of the public key, where P is a point, returns the bytes of the hexadecimal O2 plus, uh, which here is like the first, uh, let's say, identifier, plus the Y coordinate of the public key and one, and concatenated the bytes of X uh, of the x coordinate of the public key. The function integer of x, where x is a 32 byte array, returns a 256 bit unsigned integer whose most sig uh, significant byte encoding is x. Okay, uh, so here we return a integer that has encoded uh, this x 32 byte array uh, in the 256 bit. Uh, and it's unsigned, so we have not yet applied any signing function. The function lift x of x, where x is an integer 
in range 0 to p minus 1 returns the point p of which the x coordinate is x and the y coordinate is a quadratic residue modulo p or fails if no such point exists. Uh, so this function lift x of x is equivalent to the following procedure. Uh, so we have let y, the y coordinate be a c to the power of p plus 1, the private key plus 1, divided by 4 modulo p. And fail if c is not y square uh, modulo p. And return uh, r and y. Uh, which is here the signature part uh, or a part of the signature. The function point x, where the x is a 33-byte array, returns the point uh, p, the public key, so to say, for which the x-coordinate is integer of x from 1 to 33. And the y-coordinate of p and 1 is the integer of x between 0 and 1 and the 0 to uh, 0 to, or, well, zero to hexadecimal encoding, <laughs> or it fails if no such point exists. The function point x is equivalent to the following procedure, uh, which then again fail if you have x between zero and one, and that is not equal to the hexadecimal of zero two, and uh, in condition or like logical and the x of one uh, between zero and one is not equal to the hexadecimal of three. So set the flag odd if x uh, between zero and one equals the he hexadecimal of zero three, and let r and y part of the signature be lift x of x fail if lift x of x fails. Uh, if the flag odd is set and the y is an even integer, or flag odd is not set and y is an odd integer, let y equal p minus y and return r and y. And this function hash of x where x is a byte array returns 32 bytes of the SHA-256 hash of x, which we use hashing for a lot of stuff. The function jabo uh, jacobi x where x is an integer returns the jacobi, the jacobi symbol of x divided by p and is equal to x to the power of p minus 1 divided by 2 modular p. Uh, so this is Euler's cr uh, criterion, which we need uh, for the, fa the fast check for the residual, the quadratic residual modulo p. Uh, and these are all the mathematical functions. Uh, again, might be convoluted, might be a bit complicated, but it is actually basic math uh, and not too difficult. So uh, Schnorr signatures ha are much more easy uh, and let's say trivial to uh, to grok than elliptical curve signatures uh, because uh, and this all here is is uh, all linear uh, so that also helps quite a lot uh, but again uh, on the first reading even i know after several readings don't really get it too much uh, so that's why i can't explain it yet very fluently again we will have different people here joining us uh, on the world crypto network again in future shows uh, for example here the conversation uh, with jonas nick has helped me a lot uh, maybe he will be willing to come back hopefully soon to clear up some of these uh, really in-depth uh, details okay now going to the verification uh, what is actually going on here uh, so the input that is provided for the verification is the public key uh, which is a 33 byte array right and that is the public key which when is hashed uh, is the bitcoin address uh, or well uh, the back 32 address uh, um, which then is actually no longer hashed well, <laughs> the message m as a 32 byte array okay and the message here is actually the transaction proposed so the inputs being spent uh, the outputs being generated a signature, uh, which is a 64-byte array, again, which includes the lowercase r, the x-coordinate of the point r, and the, um, uh, the s part of the signature. The signature is valid if and only if the algorithm below does not fail. Uh, so let the public key be the point public key and fail if point public key fails. All right, so... Uh, this is to check that the public key is actually valid. Let r be the integer between signature of 0 and 32 and fail if r is 
larger than P, then it would be outside the finite field uh, that we have specified here. Uh, P is a, a, a large, um, uh, yeah. Let S equal integer and signature uh, or integer of the signature between 32 and 64 bytes and fail if the signature is larger than N. Uh, again, this, this must also not happen. Let E be the integer of the hash of the bytes of R concatenated with the bytes of P and the, mod, uh, the message mod n. Uh, so this here is the, uh, yeah, the, the part of the signature here with the bytes of the x coordinate of the, R, of the R point and the bytes of the message or the public key and the message. And then let the point R be s of g plus, or sorry, minus e uh, times p. Uh, so this is again then the point uh, R. And fail if infinite r, right, if we uh, are outside the finite field, and fail if uh, Jacobi uh, of y of r uh, is, one, is not equal 1 or x of r is not equal r. Uh, so this is, again, we want to have this r, the x point, or sorry, the y point, uh, be a Jacobi residual or a resi quadratic residual, and we check this with the Jacobi function, and we want to have the x coordinate um, not to be, uh, or, or sorry, yeah, we want the R to be the X coordinate of the point R. So this is how we can do the verification, right? Uh, and all we need is the public key, the message, and the signature. And then all this stuff is done on your full note uh, to make sure that this is actually a valid signature coming from the private key of this public key over the valid message that includes the transaction, uh, spending previously unspent transaction inputs, uh, or outputs in, as inputs and generating new UTXOs in the output, uh, leaving uh, or well with imp, uh, outputs being smaller than inputs and all that good stuff. So, uh, okay, now we can have a batch verification, which is uh, very nice because we of course do a lot of verification stuff uh, with uh, the blockchain and with your own full node. So input, the number, uh, U of signatures, the public key is a private key from one till U, okay, uh, with U being 33 byte arrays. The message M for one till U of all these uh, signatures, which is also a 32 byte array, and the message, uh, sorry, the signature, uh, all the signatures from one till U, and U being again 64 byte arrays. Uh, so this is exactly the same inputs that we need uh, for regular verification, but with batch verification, we need this for all the th uh, signatures that we want to verify. So we need all the public keys in the block. We need to have all the messages, the transaction information of all the transactions in this block. And we need to have all the signatures of all the transactions within this block uh, or all the inputs, so to say. All provided signatures are valid with overwhelming probability if and only if the algorithm below does not fail. So generate the u minus 1 random integers a2 till u in the range of 1 till n minus 1. Uh, if they are generated deterministically using CSPRNG, uh, a cryptographical secure pretty random number generator, seeded by a cryptographic hash of all the inputs of the algorithm, for example, the seed is the hash of the public key one till public key u, concatenated with the messages one till message u, concatenated with the signature one of signature, till signature uh, u. A safe choice is to instantiate a seed hash with SHA-256 of the cha-cha-20 with key seed using the cryptographical secure pretty random number generator to generate a 256 byte integer skipping integers not in the range of 1 till n minus 1. So what we have to have here is a random seed within this, uh, or w included in this algorithm. Uh, and we do this by employing here a cryptical ethically secure pretty random number generator, which is, well, rather secure and pretty random. <laughs> so 
uh, we, we need to be careful here which one we use, but we do this in Bitcoin Core already for all the other signatures. Uh, so uh, now li the Lipsec P256K1 library also has a CSP RNG uh, encoded as far as I know. Uh, and so no longer relies on the open SSL uh, random number generator, uh, which is cool. But we need this also in order not to reveal any private keys, um, I think. Uh, and we continue here with the algorithm that must not fail uh, if the signature, if all the signatures are valid. Uh, for i equaling one until u, let the public key of e be the point of the public key and fail if the point of the public key fails. Right? So this actually needs to be a valid public key. Let r uh, be the integer of the signature of e of 0 to 32 and fail if the r is outside the finite field. Uh, let s of e be the integer of the signature of e from bytes 32 till 64 and fail if the s e is larger than n. And let e equal the integer of the hash of the byte of the x coordinate of the r point, the bytes of the public key of e and the message of e. Right? That's each individual uh, uh, R and uh, public key and message, and modulate that with N. Let R E, or so the uh, R point on the elliptical curve, lift X of R. Uh, so this uh, this R needs to be the X coordinate of the public or of the point here, and fail if lift R and uh, lift X of R fails. Right. So if this R is not the uh, X coordinate of this R, then it is also a false signature. And also fail if S1 plus A2 S2 uh, plus AU to, uh, SU, so all in between here, uh, of the generator point does not equal R1 plus A2 R2 plus so and so on plus AU RU plus E1 P1 plus A2 E2 <laughs> times p2 uh, plus all the stuff until a u e u times p u. Uh, so these are all the checks that need to be valid in order for the batch verification process uh, to return a valid uh, signature for all the individual uh, messages with all the individual public keys. Uh, and notice that this does not require any cooperation with the signers. Right, with every individual verifier uh, can do this calculation if he has all the number of signatures included in the block, right? So he can easily see that. Uh, all the public keys, which are included uh, in, this, in the signature part uh, of every transaction, the message, which is the transaction specifying inputs and outputs, and of course the signatures, which is part of this entire thing being broadcasted by the signer to the Bitcoin network. Uh, so this is very, very nice uh, in the sense here uh, that we, we have this information already in the blockchain. And now we just have to verify it on our own full node. And we can do this by employing rather simple uh, mathematical functions, which is very nice. Uh, okay, now continuing here with the signing part. Uh, again, for signing that comes, of course, before verification. Uh, but uh, now let's explore this uh, here. For the inputs, we have the secret key, uh, which is D, as an integer in the range of 1 to n minus 1. So this is also within the finite field. Um, and the message M, which is a 32-byte array. Okay, so we need to have the secret key, uh, which we've generated here securely, and the message, which, which is the transaction uh, setting up inputs and outputs in total 32-byte arrays. To sign the message M, for the public key, uh, which is D times G. Uh, so D times G, uh, being here the generator point, uh, is the public key. And let K dash be the integer of the hash of the bytes of D, the private key, and the message, modulo N. And fail if K, hash or K, uh, K dash is not zero. And let R, the and point be k dash times g, uh, which is here, k okay, again is the bytes of d and the message. And we do this with r. And so let k then be k dash if the, Jacob, uh, the Jacobi uh, of the y coordinate of r equals one. 
So this means the y coordinate is a modulo residue. And otherwise, let k equal n minus k dash. Uh, so here again, we want to make sure that the y coordinate of this r point is actually a modulo, uh, a residue uh, of uh, or quadratic residue. And we do that again by applying the Jacobi function. If it returns valid or with one for one given k dash, then we know that this k dash is actually a valid k. And if it does not contain, or if the Jacobi function returns false, something not one, uh, then we simply take the finite field minus the k dash, and that will return us then a k, which actually is a quadratic resolu uh, of the y coordinate. Let e equal the integer of the hash of the bytes of x of, uh, so the x coordinate of r, right, which, which we now know here uh, as, uh, as this, uh, this part here, um, and other, or, and, yeah, exactly, and co concatenated with the bytes of the, the private key times the generator point times the message. Right? This here is again the public key, modulo n. And the signature is the bytes of the x coordinate of r, right, lowercase r, and the bytes of k plus the private key, uh, plus e, or times e. A modulo n. So this is the signature part, which we then again need here in uh, the input for verification. Right? Uh, so this is the signing part that happens, for example, on your own hardware wallet. Uh, and all that the hardware wallet needs is to have knowledge of the secret key, the private key that you can back up hierarchically deterministically with a monomic seed uh, of 24 words. And the message being the transaction that you propose, spending your inputs and uh, creating new outputs. Uh, and of course, these have to be valid with all the other consensus level criteria. Otherwise, it is not a valid Bitcoin transaction, although it might be a valid signature. Uh, and then all that you do here is, again, rather basic uh, cryptograph uh, cryptographic uh, magic. And uh, it, it can be done with all the regular hardware uh, or it should be able to be done with all the regular hardware that we use already. The above deterministic derivation of the point R is designed specifically for this signing algorithm and may not be secure when used in other signature schemes. For example, using the same derivation in the MUSIC multi-signature scheme leaks the secret key. Uh, see the MUSIC paper for details. So again, uh, don't roll your own crypto. Cryptography is, is di pretty difficult in all the nuances. And so if you have a naive implementation of this stuff, like if you naively apply this same protocol to the MUSIC protocol, then you actually reveal the secret key uh, based on some linearity uh, and uh, yeah, just balancing out of equations uh, that that becomes then possible. Uh, if something is aborted here. Go back to the music paper and read this. Again, this builds on top of this for regular single signature, non-aggregated keys. Uh, this works pretty well, <laughs> or well, rather like provably secure. Note that this is not a unique signature scheme. While this algorithm will always produce the same signature for a given message and public key, K and hence R may be generated in other ways, such as by a cryptographically secure pretty random number generator, producing a different but still valid signature. So again, if your private key is not a actually random number, um, then you, you're going to have problems and all these security assumptions here of the discrete log no longer work, right? If your password is password123, then the signature algorithm doesn't really do anything much uh, because you can easily guess which private key you're using here. Uh, and so always, always, always get a secure entropy, a random entropy source uh, to, for your private keys. Probably best to roll a dice, a casino dice that can actually then produce valid random numbers much better than any computer can. Um, okay, and then last for today, let's talk a bit about the possible optimizations. Many techniques are known for optimizing elliptical curve implementations. Several of them apply here, but they are out of the scope of this document. Two are listed below, however, as they are relevant to the design decision. The Jacobi symbol, the function Jacobi of X, is defined as above, but can be computed 
more efficiently using an extended GDC algorithm. And we have Jaco uh, Jacobian coordinates. Elliptical curve operations can be implemented more efficiently by using Jacobian coordinates. Elliptical curve operations implemented this way avoid many intermediate modular inverses, which are computationally expensive. And the scheme proposed in this document is in fact designed to not need any invention uh, at all for the verification. When operations on point P with Jacobian coordinates x, y, and z, which is not the point at infinity, and for which x of the public key is defined as x divided by z to, to the power of 2, and y of the public key, the y-coordinate, is defined as y of z to the power of 3. The, Jaco the Jacobi of the y-coordinate of the public key can be implemented as Jacobi yz modulo p. And the x-coordinate of the public key is not r, can be implemented as x is not equal uh, z to the power of 2, r uh, times r modulo p. Uh, so again, uh, these are some mathematical efficiencies that we can put into the background that will save on computational time. But this is an implementation detail, right, on, on how exactly the node does the verification. Um, as I understand it, it would not even be consensus critical if we have different implementations of this verification. I mean, of course, the, the core reference implementation will decide on one, uh, but a alternative client might have different design decisions here for the uh, efficiency of the verification computation. Uh, and this might be something that can be changed in different implementations without breaking consensus. Uh, but I'm rather speculating here, so don't take me uh, for, for my word here. But it's nice to see that we can further improve this already very efficient process. Uh, and again, batch verification especially is just so handy for a blockchain Bitcoin use case because we have all the number of U signers and the public keys and the messages and the signatures. And they are committed to with a lot of accumulated proof of work. Uh, so they, they tend not to change. And a reorganization of the fork uh, or, or of the chain happens rather rarely. Uh, and if it does, then we have for the new set of transactions, uh, again, a rather secure um, and, and committed to a set of number uh, of signatures, public keys, messages, and signatures, uh, which is really nice. Then every full node can do for every single block a batch verification calculation where we have all the signatures, all the public keys, all the messages, and we push them together, all of them, and then we do one computation in order to verify if everything in this transaction is correct. Uh, and most of the time, hopefully, it will return, yes, everything is valid. And then with only one calculation uh, right here, uh, or, or with this calculation algorithm, we have drastically increased the efficiency of verifying entire blocks worth of transactions, uh, which is outstanding. Uh, and again, especially with the optimizations to come. And it's also nice to see that for uh, the signing algorithm, uh, it is again rather simple and it can be done only with the knowledge of the secret key and the message uh, with then some rather basic uh, calculations here and especially like choosing uh, to discard any uh, R point which Y coordinate is not a modulo residue or a, a quadratic residue modulo P. Uh, so again, that is, uh, that is just some uh, additional constraints on the signer, which is justified because a minor constraint on the signer by discarding some R points that can be easily calculated again within milliseconds and almost no computational uh, capacity, uh, the signer can do that in half of the cases, right? Uh, but this means that the verification uh, of all the full nodes, not just today, but in the future, will be exponentially uh, more efficient. Uh, which is really, really nice uh, to see. Uh, so again, here, Schnorr has many, many very cool uh, uh, design decisions and trade-offs uh, that are uh, explored here in this bit. 
And I'm really looking forward now that we have talked in the last video about the introduction and in, uh, in the design, now sp a lot about the specification and optimization. Again, this was a very technical video. Uh, and I, I get that, I understand that. I Well, I don't understand half of what is being said here in the level of detail that you possibly could understand all this. But even just accumulating this knowledge and trying to think about this and trying to understand this helps a lot. And again, we will also go through the BIP tab root and the BIP tab script uh, in the near future and add them here to our already very long uh, playlist on the World Crypto Network about Schnorr signatures. Uh, so again, that is uh, very cool to have uh, all these different um, yeah, all these different videos on how we can learn more and more about Schnorr signatures. Uh, and Pierce, if you have any direct question, uh, you can call the HODL hotline. Uh, and make sure that you can answer or can get some answers to these questions uh, by uh, teachers who somewhat understand uh, what is going on here. Uh, and also, of course, if you would like uh, to meet us here in person, we will do uh, conferences and workshops and many different open source gatherings. And if you would like to have a better sound quality, then you can also contribute here on the right side to our telecon uh, for new microphones for all these events that we will be speaking at and doing workshops and all that good fun. So, Piers, thank you very much for joining us here today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.